Hey everyone, it's Travis Michael. I'm working on a McQuay unit today. It's got a Copeland semi hermetic compressor. We're going to be replacing the valve plates today. I got a crankcase heater I got to also replace and a low pressure switch. Uh, basically, I, I was out here on a maintenance a couple weeks ago and I noticed that the compressor just kept pumping down. You know, these type of systems, they utilize pump down cycle, which is a liquid line solenoid valve that closes, the compressor runs until the low pressure switch opens. And basically what was happening, it was a low load day. It wasn't never calling for the compressor to run. And this thing was banging on about every 15 minutes. So what I did was I did a pump down test. I basically I closed my suction valve and I bypassed the low pressure switch to basically make it pump down to almost zero. And then I shut it off. And I watched my pressures on the low side where I'm reading when I'm close to the system. So I'm reading just what should be on the compressor and basically that should not change, that should hold. And I could just watch it creep up you know, like I said, about every 15 minutes it would come back on. So it means 15 minutes it, it passed that threshold for the low pressure switch to start the pump down cycle again. And like I said, this is going on you know, four to six times an hour, basically. So I recommend it to, the, to my customer that we just replace all the valve plates on it. You know, it could only be a problem with one. It could be a problem with each of them. But, you know, best case scenario is instead of digging into it, taking the heads off, seeing what's happening, and then coming back, we'll just get all three and we'll just replace everything. So let's get into it. I set up my reclaim rig here. Uh, a lot of guys probably wouldn't even bother. You know, you valve the compressor off. How much? How much refrigerant is really in the compressor? With the failed crankcase heater, there's potential that there could have been more refrigerant in that compressor. I pulled out just over a pound. You know, I mean, it's the right thing to do. You take out the refrigerant and then you can put it back in, and then you're not venting to the atmosphere. Here I got our three new valve plates. And only one I got an unloader on, so just be mindful when you're ordering these to make sure how many unloaders you have. So we got one unloader valve plate, one non-unloader, and one non-unloader. And I just pop this one open and see what we got. We got some new gaskets, the valve plates in there wrapped in plastic. Gave me a sticker too. We ordered these parts from National Compressor Exchange, and basically they advertise themselves as a remanufacturer of these parts because you know this technology is kind of uh, antiquated at this point uh, most systems are going to have scroll compressors in them at least in the uh, you know comfort cooling uh, maybe you'll see some semi hermetics in refrigeration still but in my experience you know they're it's all scroll compressors and they they really big ones and they tandem them together or they pipe them in three or four circuits uh, to make up the, the refrigeration circuit make up the capacity that something like this would give you. Um, so uh, these parts aren't really readily available brand new anymore. So Nas National Compressor, uh, we actually will send these old plates back to them and they'll remanufacture them if they can, which I assume on, on a case like this, it's not, nothing's been obliterated. Anything that could be fixed is probably replaceable. So we're gonna have to replace these and I'll pack them back up and uh, send them back to them. So I'm gonna start by pulling this head off. Make your life easy, get yourself an impact gun. I'm sure most people already have them, but this will come right off. Now, I don't need to take this pressure switch off because this whole head's gonna come off. I can leave it on there and I can still do the work I gotta do. I always like to just leave one bolt in, I get all the other bolts out. Loosen this one up a little bit. Obviously, I made sure you know my hose is disconnected, so I need to make sure there's no pressure in there. It's going to come out on me. Very gently, you just tap it, and it should come free. I'll do one at a time. This way I can bring this back and it won't be in the way when I gotta pull that one off. If these pins you wanna be careful with. That kind of holds the plate in place. You don't wanna break those. Tap this one again. A little thumb off of the side here that could be useful for trying to 
and tap it. Like I said, just lightly though. You don't want to break anything. You should be able to work it off. I'm going to be honest with you guys here. I don't exactly know 100% uh, what is what, how everything works here. I'm pretty sure I have a good understanding of it. And basically, to me, it looks like your suction gas comes through here. It looks like your suction gas is going to come through here. To put us into these valve plates. Basically, what happens is the when it's pulling, the compressor's pulling, this 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 suction valve, this plate is gonna pull in and it's gonna allow gas to come through this section here. And then it's gonna get compressed and it's gonna come out and this is kind of like spring loaded. And the discharge is gonna go out and that's gonna pull you out on the top side of the head here. And then it will leave the plate to go back into the compressor through this slot here, which is here. Now, if I'm explaining this wrong, I'd love some of the other guys who are more experienced with working on this stuff to maybe tune in, you know, or, or uh, down below, leave a comment, and, you know, tell me if I'm wrong and let me know. This way we can help other people, you know what I'm saying? But that's basically what, uh, what I'm seeing here. Suction gas comes in, this gets depressed as it's sucking down. When it piston drives up, increase the pressure opens this spring-loaded valve, comes out to the top side of the plate through these slots, and then goes back into the compressor through the discharger. So, I have all new pieces like this, all new gaskets, so what I'm gonna do next is I'm just gonna clean up any, it actually came off pretty nicely, but there's a little bit of material here. I'm gonna use a razor blade, just try to clean it off a little bit. Also got to take the gasket off here. We got new ones for here too. Let's see how that one that comes off. This one looks like it's on there pretty good. Now that I got the gasket all off the compressor side and also the head, I'm gonna just wipe it down. Make sure there's nothing small that's gonna create us a problem. Got our new, I'm gonna call these our suction valves or suction plates. It's a little little tabs that they just sit on right there. Put them in place. It looks like they're symmetrical, identical. There's no correct way to orientate them, it's just universal. They did give me new pins in case these came out, but I'm gonna leave them in there, they didn't budge. I'm gonna just put a little oil on this gasket. Good general practice, just kinda get a good little light layer of oil all over it to make it a little wet. It's gonna, it's gonna seal up much better if that we do that. You can use refrigeration oil. With these gaskets, if you put it on the wrong way, you'll, you can tell, it just doesn't look right. You know, basically, you have all the all the holes. It's not it's not a symmetrical gasket. So you got this di the discharge here. Uh, you got the discharge here. And yeah, here's the hole for that. So you can't really mess that up. What I'm gonna do is, being that I got do the one side. Just want to get a little bit on the other side. Got the gasket all on there now, time to put the valve plate on. Obviously these 
go towards the piston. And like I said, you can't really mess it up. The pins will only let you put it on the correct way. this gasket all oiled up. Just gonna set it in place. Same thing, get it right on the pins and then it'll line up perfectly. I did end up disconnecting that high pressure switch because the gasket was stuck on there so so pretty uh pretty bad that I wanted to put it on the bench and, and clean it up better so I ended up taking the high pressure switch off, which no big deal, I'll just reattach it now. These also, the pins will go into those. Get the bolt hand tight, and let go. That's it, throw the rest of the bolts in. Tighten everything up and we'll move on to the next one.